Hello and welcome to Tech Talks IT Edition. Today we're going to be focusing on Microsoft 365 and the headline here is Are You Flying Blind and At What Cost? As you probably know, Tech Talks is a series of short webinars that are deep dives for technical practitioners. We value you, our customer, and we want you to continue in your Splunk journey. Our experts help to create these best practices, and we want you to leverage them in your daily role. My name is Todd DiCapua. As you can see, I am a senior field solutions engineer. Uh, below are a couple of the ways you can get in touch with me. Look forward to connecting with you if you would like. Uh, what we're going to be talking about today, again, being on Microsoft 365 and the Splunk ITSI content pack associated with that. Um, this is really focusing on an area today where many, many organizations are moving everything or many of their key services um, to the cloud. Um, this is solving some of their business challenges and problems that they're facing today, uh, which we'll touch on a little bit more of that as we kind of rip through this together. Um, again, as you think about these different Microsoft 365 services, many of them for your organization are critical in nature, again, being those processes, workflows, and activities. However, with Microsoft 365, you have very limited visibility into what's going on, and that is not something that you or your business can afford to not be aware of. Um, again, the status and the impact to your customers as a result of these services either being not available or not performing well uh, can be a significant negative impact. So again, we're gonna go into a lot more detail. Um, hang with me as I try to move fairly quickly. We will be also um, going through a quick agenda here so that you've got clear expectations on what we're gonna be covering. We'll deep a little bit, dig a little bit deeper into um, Microsoft 365, flying blind and at what cost, what does that mean specifically? And maybe for your organization, you are seeing some of these things already, or you will expect to very soon. Um, if you have questions, please continue the conversation through the Tech Talk discussions, which is in the Splunk community at splunk.com slash tech talk. Um, so again, as we move through, please remember that. Um, again, we're going to get into next some of the additional Splunk ITSI content pack for Microsoft 365. I'll then go into a fairly in-depth demo of the content pack for Microsoft 365 and then provide you with some additional resources to help you get started um, now. So as we start thinking about Microsoft 365 and the question of are you flying blind and at what cost, forgive me, but I had to find an image. This one represented it exactly the way that I see it. Um, again, you're piloting an organization through uh, many of the challenges, and unfortunately, with Microsoft 365, um, what you get out of the box from them, uh, it's quite limiting. Um, but again, as you think about who are those different personas, users, stakeholders of Microsoft 365, it is really a broad net. As we've uh, seen, things like security, IT, IT operations, IT administration, your DevOps and SRE teams, your platform teams, business leaders, and plenty of other folks and stakeholders that I'm sure you're well aware of have become dependent on these critical processes, workflows, and activities associated with Microsoft 365. However, uh, they do have some limited visibility to them. Um, and again, these critical business flows and functions you know, this can be not only internal to your organization, but also for external workflows. Um, the way that you've integrated in, you know, whether it be calendaring, email, all the other services that are available through Microsoft 365, again, it becomes pretty complex with your business. And what does that mean if one of them is not performing or not available? Um, it can be fairly significant. Um, and then again, today, number three, there's limited to no visibility or awareness going through the varied uh, Microsoft 365 portals. Uh, this results in number four, so being a very reactive nature to supporting the business, um, delays inherently built into that, which results in a lot of slow turnaround and, oh yeah, you may have a few surprises along the way. And if you do get to Microsoft 365, and the administration um, aspect of that portal or portals, 
what you'll find is you're kind of clicking through yet another portal to then kind of drill down through a number of different layers to try to find one uh, little nugget of information as to what's going on with that service. So number five, uh, many organizations today do find themselves migrating from a on-prem solution of Exchange and moving to the cloud with Microsoft 365. Um, the number of different benefits to doing that. Um, some of the things that I've seen and I'm sure you have as well is as we think about the footprint in the data center for those Exchange hosts and how is it we can free those up by moving to Microsoft 365. Um, in the cloud, um, also from a resource perspective, there's kind of two different views. One is the actual people um, and the teams required to support Exchange, again, being that critical um, application and services and activities that it represents. Again, I'm sure you have a number of people supporting your on-prem Exchange instances today. Um, and then also from a maintenance and support, so that ongoing cost associated with having the licensing and the on-prem solutions from Exchange, and then kind of moving to a Microsoft 365, which is more of a SaaS-based model. Again, lots of benefits here as we think about number six, that resource management and allocation component, again, is another reason why moving to Microsoft 365 makes sense for many businesses today. Um, we'll get a little bit more right now into kind of what is this Splunk ITSI Microsoft 365 content pack and focusing on results. Uh, really, as we develop solutions like this, we want to make it very easy for our customers to install, configure, and then have an out-of-the-box solution which delivers results. So that's where we're focused. The results that you're going to see from this content pack are amazing. Um, again, design teams that we worked with, um, also beta customers um, have provided great feedback. We've built a lot of that into this solution. Um, you will find 49 services out of the box with 380 different KPIs and also six glass tables. This is one of the glass tables. Uh, we called it the executive overview glass table. And what you can see here is along the bottom are kind of the seven top applications um, that our customers wanted to see. So going from left to right, you can see Power BI, OneDrive, Azure AD, SharePoint, Yammer, Teams, and Exchange. And then in the upper left corner, we've got all of our security feature functions and a summary roll up here, as well as on the upper right, we have the M365 app availability. And then in the middle, you can see that number 30 is kind of the overall health of all of Microsoft 365. What was interesting is going through our design partnerships as well as our beta program is there are a number of services that with your subscription to Microsoft 365, you may or may not know that you have um, entitlements to those services. So that's what in the upper right corner here, the M365 app availability. When you click on that, again, it's taking you right to availability. When you click on availability, it'll show you all of the applications and their availability status. Um, and this has been very enlightening for many a customer. So again, this just being one of those glass tables, the executive overview, but wanted to provide that quick um, intro as we're rolling through here fairly quickly. So simplifying getting this Microsoft 365 data in and getting results in minutes. So on the left-hand side, as you know, we look through this, this is oftentimes um, representing those many different portals and all the different clicking and being able to see everything that's going on across all of your Microsoft 365 environment. Um, what we have done is made this very simple and condensed it into um, a one, one location and a one click to a lot of detail behind it. So really um, a great opportunity for you to check this out, see how it applies. And again, I'm gonna show you some of the speeds and feeds of how to utilize this capability most effectively and efficiently at your organization. Um, on the left-hand side, you can see we're talking about performance and availability. Again, think of this as you are subscribing to a cloud-based service called Microsoft 365. So you want to see the performance of those services, the availability of those services. You want to understand what incidents are going on. You want to understand what are the proactive messages that are being sent out. Uh, you may also want to see really quickly where that my customers are having login success and failures. And oh, by the way, if they are failing, 
why are they failing, what is the IP address, what was their attempted uh, login, uh, a lot more details behind that as well as geographically where are all my customers logged in from right now. Um, you can also see we've got the core six services and KPIs that we had noted already. And then lastly, um, this became a surprise for many folks, but uh, Microsoft 365 also provides a way to bring a lot of security data in as well as a lot more. So we'll go into that detail and show you that here in a minute. In our demo, on the right-hand side, you can see a lot more detail into all the pieces that I'm going to be touching on in the demo and uh, the elements that I think are going to be important and valuable to you and your organization from a technical perspective as we go through this. So without further ado, I'm going to jump into the demo. Um, so the real focus here is how is it that you gain these immediate insights from your Microsoft 365 tenant or tenants. Um, also, I will prove to you how to get results in minutes leveraging this Splunk ITSI content pack in now, um, enabling you and your customers to be able to reduce their MTTI and MTTR, increasing visibility and awareness of the services that you're subscribed to through Microsoft 365, as well as significantly mitigating risk to your business. Again, from the simple fact that you will have been flying blind um, if you're not leveraging this capability. Um, so again, moving to the cloud, moving the services there, being able to solve some of those big business challenges and problems that you've got, um, outstanding. Let's just make sure that all three of these elements were able to mitigate there along the way. So what I've done is I've brought you into one of my demo environments and what we are seeing right now is our service analyzer. You can see I filtered this down just to Microsoft 365. So this is everything that you see out of the box. Um, and how, you, how we've organized this, again, is really focused around those six key applications plus Active Directory. And then we've brought in security and also the overall Microsoft 365 app availability. So those key six applications are right here with Yammer, Teams, SharePoint Online, Power BI, OneDrive, and of course, Exchange. Uh, we then get into the security elements, and you can see all of those here and available, as well as the Active Directory component, and then all the way to the right is app availability. So we'll go through this in great detail here shortly. Um, I also did mention that there's a number of glass tables. There's six of them that we ship with, so I can go ahead and start loading these. So you can see we have the executive overview, the overview dashboard, incident and message dashboard and then we get into security we have three of them so the first one is our overview then we get right into threat detection and threat management threat detection and threat management are subsets of this overall um, security dashboard overview so again this will all make a lot more sense here in a minute um, this one you will see as it's loading um, the one that we had on the screenshot of the slide deck that i was rolling through but again, you can see all of these are real time. Um, if you wanted to see what more was going on here with the M365 app availability, um, you will see it takes us right back into Service Analyzer. We can see that we've got some services that have recently been restored and we want to understand what those are. So here's some Azure Information Protection, some Dynamics 365, Exchange Online, Microsoft Forms. Um, so again, in here, we have 323 entities reporting in where um, service was recently restored. So this just being one example of how we can go very quickly, one click from our executive overview here into everything else that's going on behind the scenes of each of these elements. So again, hopefully you can see how this would be extraordinarily helpful, whether this be kind of your CIO, CXO, um, maybe it's, you know, a CIO within the business line, um, but they're going to want to see this type of information, maybe even a business leader, or for that matter, within your IT operations, maybe you have a network operation, security operations center, um, they're going to want this up on a 40-foot wall, potentially. Uh, there's a few other views and glass tables that we'll touch on. Let me go ahead and preload a couple of these for us, just as we're chatting through them, and it'll make it much faster for us to go through these and again this is all real time in my environment right now and these are the seven applications or the six applications plus active directory 
and this is giving me a historical view um, to the performance and the availability of these applications and what's going on within Active Directory. As you had just seen when we clicked through and we went into the details of those other 365 or all 365 apps, again, you can click on any of these and it takes you right into that detail. Um, here in the middle at the top, we've got incidents and messages. So again, just remember, okay, right, I'm now subscribing to this cloud service called Microsoft 365. As incidents happen, Microsoft is letting me know, hey, we're investigating an item. We have seven items that are um, services degraded. Um, we have zero that are coming back as service interruption, and we have one that's showing as uh, service restored. As you look at the bottom here, these are kind of these proactive kind of communications, which are called messages. So again, a plan for change coming up, or hey, we're proactively going to be preventing or fixing an issue, or hey, we just want to let you know this is something that may be happening in a few days or a few weeks. Um, so again, all of those messages being captured here. Um, if you have nothing coming back, that's a really good thing. Um, that means that there's no messages there, that there's no incidents there. So Again, I'm thankful to see that there's nothing coming back right now for service interruption. Uh, again, if that were to have something pop up, again, you can click on it right here and it'll take you right into what's going on. Same thing here for your login. So again, we've got 25,000 plus logins uh, right now that have been successful. We have 421 that have failed. Uh, this is actually up 1% over this time period. Uh, so again, it's increasing. I might want to look into why that's failing, what IP address is it coming from, what was the attempted way that they were trying to log in. Um, and then over here on the right, these are all the current users um, that are logged into my system and using it across all of Microsoft 365. And again, quick visual, go ahead and roll over it, see what's going on. Um, over time, you'll kind of get to know what the trend is and see if there's anything interesting here that you should be Looking into a little bit more, again, one click takes you right into all of those users, IP addresses, etc. cetera. Um, we did not want to lose sight of kind of the overall forest, so we made sure we put the overall health here for you in this overview glass table. Um, here you'll see the key KPIs for each of the six major applications that we're highlighting on the overview dashboard. And each of these are a little bit different. It's following some of the Microsoft recommendations as far as what are those key KPIs for each of these applications. And again, we're bringing those to you right here on the overview dashboard. And then as we roll all the way to the bottom, you'll see that there's six different boxes covering off on security. And we're looking at the overall security score as well as threat detection, threat management. Again, showing these over time. Looking at information governance. Again, this is a major item for, I'd say almost all of our large enterprise organizations. This is now moving into mid-sized organizations. Uh, permissions becomes very interesting. So what is it that your administrators are granting people permissions on? And again, is that something you want administrators to provide uh, permissions to other folks on or not? Um, so again, if there's an internal threat, this will be able to very quickly see that information. And then of course, mail flow. So what's going on within your exchange mail? What's going in, what's going out? Again, we can start to see uh, some of the details here by just simply clicking on that. As we transition, we're going to be going deep into this incident and message dashboard. So just taking what was in the top middle on our overview, and this is a deep dive into everything that's going on within our service incidents as well as messages. You can see that we've got the updates across the top like you just saw. There's a lot more detail. Again, this is a bubble chart. It shows us each of the statuses over time. And here you can see we have one that showed up here. This is the specific item. Um, and again, this is uh, listed from Microsoft 365 in their format for this issue. Um, and then down here is the same type of information, but in a tabular format. You can see what the services are here. Also, a lot of information that might be interesting to you. Again, pagination built in. Um, and then the same thing across here for the messages. So a lot of information there and available. Now we'll move into security, and there is a lot on this one glass table. However, if you are a CISO, if you are on the CISO's team or within the CISO's office, 
this is something that's going to be critically important for you. Again, at the top, we're looking at threat detection. This is across all Microsoft 365 tenants that you have. So you can see what the score is here over time. At the bottom, and again, this is just, hey, we're trying to find issues, potential risks. Uh, I'll just, here's the first one. So risky sign-in. Right now, there's 73 of them. You can see the trend is going up. I would click here to go ahead and learn more about that risky sign-in. And again, coming straight from Microsoft, what is it they've identified as a risky sign-in? You know, who are the people? How are they trying to sign in, et cetera? All that information is there. Um, leak credentials. Again, there's a lot of information here that we're bringing directly in from Microsoft and making this simple for you to see it on a single view. Threat management. This is okay. Now it's inside. Now we have to manage that threat appropriately. So, for example, the first one here, email reported by user as malware or phish. Right now we're seeing 62. Again, that's going up. I want to understand each of those, where they are. Again, is this in one tenant? Is this in one specific area? Is it one user? Is it a few users? Who are the users? All of that information is available to you at one click right here from this dashboard. So, again, we did not want to lose sight of the overall forest. What are some of the other trees? Well, here's kind of the overall security. Here's threat detection. Here's threat management. And you can see as I hover over these, all of these you can click on to get into more information. We also provide the performance and availability of all seven of those services, including Active Directory coming in. And again, all of these are clickable from this glass table as well. What we did now here is when we come into threat detection, um, some of the feedback that we re received from the teams in our beta program was, hey, can you break that out and just make it focused on threat detection? Because within our security operations center, we have that threat detection team, and this is what we want them to look at and investigate on um, first. And then there's another team that focuses on threat management. So again, after it comes into the organization and looking at how they mitigate the risk associated with that. So again, all of this being the glass tables, again, we covered off on six of them. These are all six out of the box that ship with this content pack. Hopefully you can see how this is gonna be able to quickly provide you with a lot of information and all of it at your fingertips with a single click. The other thing that we do provide out of the box are a number of different dashboards. Um, here you can see there's all 13 that we ship. I will just go ahead and click into one of these for the overview of Microsoft 365 on the whole. And you'll go ahead and see this is building out. Um, as this dashboard builds out, here's everything from Active Directory coming in, OneDrive, SharePoint, Exchange, Microsoft Teams, and then the overall workload status. And then as we come down here, if you wanted to click in to additional details, workloads, etc., uh, again, all of this pre-populates for you and provides you with a great amount of detail. Um, again, you can see that as we would paginate through here, there's a lot more information. You can make this panel bigger. Um, all of this is easy to modify as you would see fit. This being a very simple example of that M365 overview dashboard. Again, there are 13 of them that this entire content pack ships with. And you can see how helpful these would be simply from the titles. Um, but again, you can go ahead and click into each of those. So let's see, we've talked about the glass tables. We've talked about the dashboards. We did a really quick overview of service analyzer um, and how each of these are kind of structured and laid out. Uh, one of the other things that's interesting to our customers is you can set these up to come in and have all of your services enabled. Um, so again, I had mentioned that there are 49 services that this content pack ships with. That's where you can see that. And again, the status. So right now, all of them are enabled. But if you said, you know what, I really don't care about security. I just want to turn security off. Well, you just come in here, disable it, disable it, done. Um, so now that will not be coming into your service tree, will not be coming into, into any of your glass tables, will not be coming into any of your dashboards. Uh, so again, if you have not seen this, it's under configuration services. And again, you'll see everything that's loaded as associated with this content pack. You can see if you were to search by M365, that'll go ahead and pull it up, all 49 services for you that we ship with. Um, as we kind of come into here, I don't know how many people are familiar with Service Analyzer. So there's a service tree view. There's also a tile view. 
um, kind of a couple different ways you can be looking at the same information as we come back over to the tree view again i find many of the technologists that i work with love this view the best um, but you can see a number of different elements here um, threat management is one it's orange right now and we've got some warnings so again a potential malicious url click was detected um, so again this is a malicious url that would be an email and somebody went ahead and clicked on it so uh, we want to find out where and what and we have this entity name um, so this is a specific uh, Microsoft 365 tenant. Um, as we would click into this, this will provide us additional detail and information associated with this tenant. And what you're going to see is this is coming into that entity detail. There's a number of different ways that you can see this. This drops you right into the raw data. Um, you could also go into some of the analytics that are also provided. Um, you can create your custom events um, dashboards. So, for example, if you just want to look at everything going on from a management activity perspective, it's now going in and pulling in all of that data for the last data, the last year, and we'll be going ahead and providing that for you here. In addition, um, one of the favorite pieces that I've seen, and again, this is brand new, um, I think it was in 4.8 of ITSI, but now you can get right into here and see what's going on. So, for example, um, if you wanted to have, you know, these are navigation suggestions. So now I want to go ahead and I want to look at more details as it would relate to Exchange Online. As an example, again, to go ahead and find this one specific item that we're looking for, um, you can see that there's a number of migrations that are happening. There's a number of um, users and what's being performed. Um, so you can see, again, taking you right into the details of each of these different users and the activities that they are performing. So again, this is your second click in to these results. And again, that takes you right into these dashboards. In addition, um, this potentially malicious URL that we were checking out, you can see that there's actually 28 KPIs that are firing um, in that one area. And then there's seven services total. So again, remember the relationship services first, and then the KPIs are under those services. But you can see what might be interesting here across all of these services. Um, and you could just, again, click on one of these. That'll take you right into the next level. So it's kind of like one click, two clicks into defining that needle in the haystack. But again, this kind of goes through, shows you how you go very quickly and easily. One click into this from Service Analyzer. Then you get into the entity details. Um, a lot of this located right here in your infrastructure overview. But another item that I wanted to show you is called entity types. Um, so many customers wanted to go ahead and understand how is it that I can create some custom entities. We ship with three of them. So SharePoint, Power BI, and your Microsoft 365 tenants were those that we saw and our customers said were most important. So we're giving you those three out of the box. Um, but this is showing that right now we have 19 different tenants that we have data coming in for and that we are rolling up and summarizing across Service Analyzer, across the different dashboards, across the different glass tables, and again, making that all available to you. Um, as you get into the episodes, so again, if we come back here, uh, for example, within Microsoft 365 Mailflow, as things get bad, what we're going to see are episodes that start to come in and populate. As they do, you'll be able to see them come in as an episode here. and so for example, this first one, we can see there's 56 instances of this alert that's happening with total unique users. Um, the administrator owns it right now. It was um, rated as a medium severity. It is resolved as of right now. Um, and then across the top, this is another feature that I find helpful um, to understand all of the episodes that you currently have going on. So what is the average mean time to, I'm sorry, the mean time to resolve is over 38,000 minutes. Um, we have four medium um, severity episodes happening right now. Um, leveraging Splunk in our AI and ML capabilities, we've been able to have a total noise reduction of 97.08%. Um, so again, you can see here, we've got this listed as one episode, but there's actually 56 um, counts of that happening behind the scenes. So that's representative here of how that works. We only have 50% of our episodes acknowledged and our mean time to acknowledge is 39,400 and some minutes. 
So you can see that right now it's kind of lagging as far as that mean time to acknowledge as well as our mean time to resolve. But again, all this available right through Splunk. Uh, this is our episode review. And again, all this ships with the content pack as well. And this will light up and be available for you. So I think I've gone through and covered all of the key elements that I wanted to in this demo to give you a pretty quick overview of everything that ships with it and how, again, you're going to be able to do the couple of things that we spoke about. So let's go ahead and pull those up again so you can see how you're able to reduce your MTTI and MTTR through increasing your visibility and awareness of everything that's going on across all of your Microsoft 365 tenants as well as mitigating significant risk, quite frankly, for your business and a number of partners and stakeholders that you have. So that's kind of the end of the demo portion. Um, you might be asking, hey, where is it I can find some additional resources? Well, we've provided a ton of them. Uh, you can see there's kind of uh, a couple major sections here. So we'll talk about training and certification, documentation, e-learning videos, as well as blog posts. Um, so again, all of these are available and um, coming soon. Um, so depending on when you're watching this, um, the blog post is actually coming when available uh, for GA. Um, so again, keep your eyes out for that one. But if you hit that link right there, it'll take it over to my blog and you'll see the link in there as soon as it is available to you. Um, as we go ahead and kind of start to wrap things up here, I don't want to forget that we've got an incredible community of Splunk users on our community site. And what we want to do is to be able to continue this conversation with you. Um, so again, if you haven't checked out community.splunk.com, please do so now. Um, there's also three other URLs that I wanted to make sure you had. One is that community link. The second one is Splunk Tech Talks. So we've already kind of talked through the splunk.com slash tech talks. This is where you can find the events. Um, and then lastly is Splunk Ideas. So this is where you, the customer, the partner, have the opportunity to go out and submit new ideas as well as search for ideas that have already been submitted, uh, vote for those ideas that you think are most valuable, and then continue to innovate the product. And again, all of this being community and partner driven, it's something that we absolutely love. We look very closely at this and uh, we actually have this wired up behind the scenes so that as we're developing new feature function, a lot of this comes from our customers and our partners via this Splunk Ideas. So highly encourage you to have a look at that and go ahead and submit your ideas. Uh, before we wrap up, I wanted to mention that we are currently working on increasing our presence on peer review sites like Trust Radius. So not sure if you've heard of this before, uh, it's a great site to go and um, not only look at for references and what other people are saying about various products in, in the industry, but we would also love it if you would take a few moments to leave us a review on TrustRadius.com, and we would really appreciate that of what you're saying for ITSI or IT service intelligence, and we would love to hear your story. We really appreciate you taking the time out of your schedules to join us today. Please tune back in for future Tech Talks. We're excited to share the series with you. On behalf of Splunk, this is Todd DiCapio, and I'd like to say thank you again. Look forward to speaking with you soon.